Chinese spacecraft raises concerns about their covert program. While dumping another uncontrolled booster back to Earth, China completes the Tiangong station. A planet with the density of a marshmallow is also discovered by scientists. This week has a lot to cover, so let's get started. This is a race for space. Did you aware that China has a covert spacecraft? Not only does it possess a highly guarded secret spacecraft, but that aircraft has also been orbiting the Earth for more than 90 days, and it recently launched some sort of item into space. The strange object hasn't been doing much more than changing its orbit since it was launched on a lengthy March 2 rocket back in August. Only after a brief declaration by the Chinese government that their reusable plane had been launched in a report from the American Space Force, which has been monitoring it the entire time, did we learn about the plane. The tracking stations believe the item to be a satellite because it is considerably smaller than the airliner. Yet again, we lack solid information. This satellite may be used as a test to examine how the spacecraft fulfills its task or as a monitoring satellite to gather data on the spacecraft itself, similar to the Band Xing satellite that was launched in 2008 to photograph the Shenzhou 7. The plane itself, though, is what's really intriguing. Apart from its existence, we barely know anything about it. However, it does appear to be a part of China's wider effort to create a reusable spacecraft, maybe to support their newest Tiangong space station and planned telescope project. This spacecraft and its suborbital twin are both operated by the Chinese Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, or CALT. Although we don't know how the planes appear faring wreckage on display at a middle school in the Chinese province of Hunan provides us some notion. Right now, it's speculated that the craft would resemble the Boeing X-37B, which is essentially America's take on a brand new experimental space plane. Several times between 2010 and 2020 it was launched. However, it is very obvious that China is more enthusiastic about its suborbital partner even while the orbital aircraft is receiving all the limelight. Actually, we do know a little bit more about this aircraft. China performed the system's maiden test flight back in 2021, doing a vertical takeoff and horizontal landing. The American Experimental Space Aircraft Program also uses this kind of flying According to CALT, the system provides a long-distance, high-speed alternative for fast-transporting freight around the globe or launching more spacecraft into low Earth orbit. And in a statement released by CALT in September, we received some hazy pictures of this space transit system. A brief animation in the paper shows a massive plane carrying a smaller vehicle into the upper atmosphere before landing again. These strategies closely resemble the systems that other organizations have recently been experimenting with as the Launcher 1 from Virgin Orbit or the Toad Glider Air Launch technology from NASA. China's interest in creating this technology is thus not particularly unexpected. The typical secrecy of this entire developing process is what surprises me. China celebrates its achievements about as quickly as any other nation. However, it appears that the military is substantially funding the Chinese space plane program. So perhaps it is not that strange that they haven't shown off their planes yet. Despite the lack of knowledge, it is fascinating to see new launch systems being created since the shuttle program spacecraft have been a practical means of traveling in low Earth orbit. It's an excellent method for making a spaceship reusable without using chemical rockets to burn for a landing. Since on November 1st, China began the final step of building their Tiangong space station. They launched the last module on a heavy load March 5B rocket and mishandled another orbiting booster in the process. The third and last pressurized part of the Tiangong space station is the 17.9 meter long, 23 metric ton mannequin module, which also has a cargo airlock and additional laboratory equipment racks both within and outside the module. The three-person crew may now return to Earth after just a few spacewalks are required to permanently link the machine to the main DNA core module. This is expected to happen later this month. The present crew was flown up in June of this year with the intention of serving as building experts to guarantee the station's completion. However, despite the fact that building on the Tiangong barely began in 2021, China has once again carelessly let the core stage of its Long March 5B rocket to fall down to Earth uncontrolled. Some of you may recall that when the previous Tiangong module was launched in July, a similar story took place. The core booster of the Long March fell uncontrollably back to Earth, broke apart and scattered over a significant portion of the South China Sea, with reports of explosions coming from parts of Malaysia. 
It's true that there was a very slim chance that the deorbit event would strike a city, but the point is that there shouldn't have been any chance at all. The fundamental issue is that the Long March 5 is built to launch these station modules into orbit using all of its fuel. Other organizations have safety plans in place to guarantee that the majority of rockets that are too large to burn up completely will store some of their fuel to regulate where they fall down. However, China is not doing anything unique compared to other organizations. We do observe several types of space debris striking the Earth globally. Starship has capability criteria that depend on consuming its whole fuel complement, according to Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceA. So when the following Long March rocket dropped back to Earth on November 4, everyone at least gave it some thought. Large portions of the continental United States and most of Africa were included in the probable debris hit region. The booster splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, fortunately. But back in July, when the first Long March booster acquired notoriety, this was a more riskier event. Nearly every other space agency denounced the Chinese launch's carelessness. We concurred, but we also emphasized that China wasn't the only nation allowing debris to fall wherever it pleased. However, hardly a single space agency or rocket business would be so careless as to put two sizable populated areas at risk, as the Chinese agency just did in reaction to the probable debris hits. Until the booster's splashdown in the Pacific was confirmed, all air travel along its predicted course was halted. Space organizations and business executives have once again denounced the Chinese government, but there isn't really a means to make them answer for their actions. The executive director of the Aerospace Corporation Center for Orbital and Reentry Debris Studies, Marlon Sorge, stated that there aren't any international treaties or actual regulations that regulate what you're permitted to do in terms of reentry during a media conference on November 2nd. Therefore, there isn't really a direct legal mechanism to regulate what's happening on a global scale. Even though it's obviously a long shot, perhaps we might start working on a treaty to halt this relatively. Drive the car. It seems like a de-orbit method that will result in a fatality. A finding has been made by astronomers at the Kitt Peak National Observatory in Arizona. That is strange. That lacks much scientific rigor. We are aware. What else would you term a planet that is comparable in size to Jupiter? With a marshmallow's worth of density, examining the data collected by NASA's test survey spacecraft allowed researchers to discover this very faint exoplanet. TESS observes stars and keeps note of when their light fades in order to find exoplanets. This is often a sign of a planet transiting in front of TESS cameras. From there, it can determine how long it takes a potential planet to complete an orbit around its star, validate its size, and determine whether it is indeed a planet. The planet in this case is Tokai 3757b, which circles its red dwarf star so tightly that it completes its year in just 3.5 days. Even by itself, that is odd. Strong flares released by red dwarfs would typically swiftly deplete a planet's atmosphere. Our enormous marshmallow shouldn't be here. But when it was found, the study team set to work with two further sensors, Mead and Nessie, both of which are intended to capture velocity and size information with greater accuracy. The team then determined the planet's density and mass with the aid of the habitable zone planet finder on the Hobby Eberly Telescope and the wonderful people at the Red Boots Observatory. As it turns out, despite being about the size of Jupiter, our new gas giant weighs just 25 as much as our own giant, which means it could float in a bathtub of water. If only we could locate a large enough tub. Thus, we have a planet that is exceedingly light, with an atmosphere that is orbiting a red dwarf sun at a distance of five light years. How is it even conceivable for this planet? The researchers have a few concepts, though. They think it's likely, for starters, that this giant developed more gradually than Jupiter. Typically, gas giants develop around a solid, rocky core and absorb planetary gases until the local supply is depleted. Our marshmallow giant appears to have had some difficulty generating that thick of a core, whereas the majority of gas giants have cores that are around 10 times the mass of Earth. It is substantially lighter as a result. Its orbit, which appears to be a little eccentric, may be largely responsible for how it manages to withstand the fury of its red dwarf star. This would allow the planet to cool off while traveling at the perihelion of its orbit. Although further research will undoubtedly be required, this suggests that there may be more wispy gas giants in other systems just waiting to be discovered. A huge marshmallow of gas. Reality is superior than science fiction in every way. 
every week check back with us for more updates on everything. Interstellar exploration in the aerospace industry are related.